you're not gonna believe what just happened on a live stream in China. Humanoid robots, full-size human-shaped machines, just stepped into a ring and started fighting each other. Not some tiny toy robots or clunky metal mascots. I'm talking about sleek combat-trained machines throwing punches, landing kicks, and scrambling back to their feet like trained athletes. And no, this isn't some sci-fi film, this was a real event, broadcast live, with real teams controlling these robots in front of a real audience. Welcome to the world's first humanoid MMA tournament and this where robots are learning to fight like us, and we're watching it all unfold in real time. So how did we get here? Who built these things? And what does it actually mean when robots start beating each other up for sport? Let's break it down. So here's where it all went down. How? Yijiang province, just after midnight on May 26. That's when China Media Group hit the Go Live button and officially launched what they called the World Robot Competition Mecha Fighting Series. And yeah, it was exactly as intense as that name sounds. From the very first second, it didn't feel like a tech expo or some stiff robotics demo. It felt like you were watching a high-stakes eSport, crossed with a late-night MMA pay-per-view. Clean camera work, intense commentary, dramatic lighting, everything was built to hype it up as a legitimate sporting event. Now the structure of the show was split into two main parts. First you had showcase rounds. These were all about showing what the bots were physically capable of. Think solo performances, throwing one-two punch combos, hook punches, side kicks, and even aerial spin kicks that honestly looked way more controlled than they had any right to. You'd see one robot step into the center of the ring, hit a combo like a martial artist, and step back out. It was slick and kind of surreal. But the real headline, the tournament fights. That's where things got wild. Four human teams, each stationed behind a control console, squared off in a bracket-style competition. Each team controlled their own full-size humanoid robot in real time, I'm also like pilots in a mech suit, minus the cockpit. From their stations, they decided every jab, dodge, and step their robot would take. You could feel the tension. The stakes were real. If you're old enough to remember Rock'em Sock'em robots, imagine that minus but on steroids. These weren't little plastic toys bouncing around on springs. These machines were over a meter tall, built with advanced motors, stabilizers, sensors, and custom control stacks. When they connected with a punch or got knocked off balance, the motion felt human, like watching a trained fighter slip, recover, and square up again, empowering this whole spectacle. A company you might have already seen go viral, Unitree Robotics. They're known for their four-legged robots that can backflip and sprint, like robo-dogs. But this time, they brought the heat with their flagship humanoid, the Unit G1. Right at the center of the chaos, the MVP of the whole thing, was the Unit G1. This is the humanoid built by Unitree Robotics. The same startup that made waves with those insane backflipping quadrupeds. And now, they've taken that same level of engineering and poured it into a robot designed to trade punches in a fight cage. Quick specs. And trust me, you're gonna want these ready to flex in your next group chat. The G1 stands about 1.32 meters tall, weighs roughly 35 kilos, and it's loaded with custom high bandwidth actuators. That basically means the joints and motors are tuned to respond fast and smoothly. New jerky movement, no delay. Plus, it's running serious onboard compute power to handle balance, movement, and recovery on the fly, even while getting rocked in the face. And you could really see the tech doing its thing in the ring. There were moments when a G1 would get completely swept off its feet, legs tangled, flat on the mat and it would scramble back up in the same amount of time a trained featherweight boxer might take to recover from a slip. Not stumble. Not reboot. Just get up, stabilize, re-engage. That alone showed just how far we've come in balancing reactive robotics with real-world performance. But here's the important part, none of these robots were fully autonomous. Not even close. Behind every G1 was a human part of the team Ni is standing at a control station, watching the feed and calling the shots. It's what Unitree called human-machine collaboration. Think of it like a tag team. The human operator decides when to jab, block, or pivot, making all the strategic choices, while the robot handles the execution. That means onboard systems are constantly balancing, adjusting torque, detecting collisions, and limiting strain on the hardware, all while following the human's lead. It's like having a professional fighter with a robotic nervous system under your command. And from a tech perspective, this kind of setup is a dream. Because while most robotics labs spend months testing stability at walking speed, like 2 kilometers an hour, here developers were watching their robots take hooks to the jaw, get shoved mid-step and still maintain form. 
The entire system is under constant physical pressure, which exposes weaknesses fast and forces improvements even faster. Okay, so yeah, watching robots throw punches is entertaining as hell. But here's the part that surprised a lot of people this wasn't just for show, that fight ring. It's actually a brutal testing ground for humanoid robots. When you throw a machine into a high-impact fast reaction environment like this, you learn things that a lab test could never reveal. Every punch fall and recovery is feeding data into how these machines can handle stress, stay balanced, and avoid breaking under real pressure. According to one of the researchers on site, Shi Feng Chu from Sense Time, combat forces robots to hit every technical system at once full body coordination, arm agility, battery performance, actuator endurance, it all gets pushed to the edge in seconds. Forget treadmills or static tests. Fighting forces a robot to move like a human, react like a human, and fail like a human. And when it fails, that failure shows engineers exactly what to fix. Fast. And here's the cool part, the same control loops that help a bot land a spin kick in a fight. They're also useful for getting a warehouse robot back on its feet after it crashes into a pallet. It's the same math, the same control logic. Combat just turns up the difficulty to 100 and forces robots to level up fast. Now here's where it gets even crazier. That event? Not a one-off. The organizers are already planning a bigger showdown this December mass this time in Shenzhen and the rumors are wild. We're talking full-size mechs, heavier frames, and possibly autonomous fighting rounds. That's right. No human on the sticks. Just machines going toe-to-toe -to -toe on their own. And if you're wondering why anyone would put time and money into making robots fight on livestream, well follow the money. According to China's Institute of Electronics, the humanoid robot market is expected to explode to around 870 billion yuan by 2030. That's roughly 120 billion US dollars. So yeah, when you see companies like Unitree, Agbot, Engine AI, and Booster Robotics diving headfirst into robot MMA, it's not just for fun. It's R&D. It's marketing. It's a spotlight for tech talent and a magnet for investors. Because in this industry nothing says our robot is ready for the real world like having it survive a roundhouse kick and keep fighting. It's flashy but it also proves something real. Durability, control, and high-speed human-like motion in unpredictable conditions. The ring isn't a gimmick, it's a launch pad for the next wave of robotics. So let's just take a second and think about what we're watching here. Robots not just doing basic tasks, not walking on treadmills or dancing for applause, but stepping into combat, fighting, recovering, competing, and doing it all live in front of a global audience. This isn't just a tech demo anymore, this is the line where machines start stepping fully into human roles, not just copying us, but matching us in coordination reaction speed and maybe soon, decision making. The fight ring is just one stop on that journey. Today it's jabs and sidekicks. But tomorrow? These same systems could be used in rescue missions, defense, disaster zones anywhere humans would be at risk. And the craziest part? We're still early. If this is what robot fighting looks like now just imagine what those December matches are going to bring. Heavier bots. Smarter systems. Maybe even autonomous fighters. So yeah, keep your eyes on this space. Because humanoid robots aren't science fiction anymore, they're here, they're scrapping in the cage. And they're only getting better. If this blew your mind even a little bit, drop a like, hit subscribe, and stick around because this is just the start of a wild ride. Thanks for watching.